James Donaldson here with The Contemporary Gentleman. And first off, if you want to support me, Patreon, Instagram, TikTok, great ways to do that, as is liking and subscribing uh, to my channel, my videos, etc. So anyway, today's video, we're talking about the Silencer Co. Osprey, specifically the Osprey 40. Now, I do want to be clear, it's not a bad game. into the meat and potatoes and MSRP'd because it is discontinued so this one MSRP'd at uh, $918 and that's roughly around what they cost now uh, it is 11.1 .1 ounces 8.06 inches it is 1 inch 1.30 inches by 1.75 inches and its true internal volume is about uh, a little over 150 milliliters of water, probably about 165 milliliters of water, which I'll get into later. 125.2 decibels is its rating for 9 millimeter, and 128.6 is its rating on 40 cal. Now it is a monolithic core, which means it uh, is just one piece of metal that was machined out. And, um, it's aluminum primarily and some stainless steel. It's not full auto rated and it works on both 9mm and 40 caliber as well as subsonic 300 blackout. So and in theory 10mm as well, which we'll talk about. Um, so, getting into it. Alright, so hopefully you can hear me okay. We are going to be doing our water test. So, I'm putting the can water until the bubbles stop coming out. That way I am at least marginally convinced that uh, I have filled the can all the way with water. This is a little awkward. I'm still getting some bubbles out. So. So I think I've gotten pretty much all the water out. And of course, as that player already said, we're going metric. So, just uh, kind of between 150 milliliters and 200 milliliters. So, uh, this being the first can we're doing this experiment with, I don't really know what that means. But I'm sure I'm going to digress all the more back in the studio. So, whatever the hell that means. Why is this can special? It's in the design. So this is what you call an eccentric can because it is not concentric. Which is what this is. Symmetrical on all sides. Circular, etc. Um, it's a nice can. I like that one. GM45. So, going back to our Osprey. Now this design does a few things. One, uh, heavily advertised, it results in um, your you not needing suppressor hide sights or in some cases suppressor hide sights just being more effective. I will tell you, I haven't really seen this on a gun where I didn't think I needed suppressor hide sights. Uh, and even then, um, uh, what I will give it is that a lot of cans like this one, um, still not going to see over it really with suppressor hide sights depending on uh, how ridiculous or non-ridiculous you're going to get with it. So okay, this one, suppressor hide sights, even lower ones, you're going to see over it pretty good as you'll see in the footage I'm rolling in. So that's great. Um, my taller sights, honestly, uh, are because I have an optic on this gun and a gun like my 40, I plan to put an optic on it. So for me, which I'll talk about, uh, I don't really care. Not that iron sights aren't the big sell for me. One of the big things was this is obviously off balance. There's more weight hanging down. So therefore, 
it's going to prevent the can from wanting to unwind. It's pretty common for concentric cans to try to unwind under heavy pistol use. Um, so, what I have noticed is that it will start to unwind, but it can only go so far because of the weight. That is an extremely positive thing about this can that I would like people to note. Um, overall, can design. Um, it just looks different. It looks cool. Uh, people like the look of it on their guns, and so on and so forth. So that's great. Um, then you have the cam design. So, um, rotating the cam because, obviously, when you have a silencer hanging down like this, when you thread it onto, let's see what it wasn't threaded onto most recently, um, when you thread it onto a gun, it's going to look uh, weird if it's not lined up. So you need to be able to rotate it because barrels are threaded differently. So like here, it's not really, I would need to adjust it. I don't know if you can tell, it's not straight. Now let's talk about a con. Um, this can is noted for having a lot of volume. That being the first time I did the volume test, which we'll see in a minute. Um, I don't know if it does or doesn't, but I know people say it's got a lot of volume. That can be a negative thing because it allows for more FRP, which is first round pop. That is the initial round burning up the oxygen inside the can. So that means that it will be louder on that first shot um, than some other cans. Now I would say that is kind of a typical attribute of, of a lot of monolithic core cans. So that doesn't really surprise me, and I don't think it's a big deal. Obviously, the fact that you can shoot it wet pretty much negates any first round pop whatsoever. So there's that. As far as wet performance, uh, let's take a look. Damn, dude. That is quiet. <laughs> so as you can see, the wet performance is pretty much outstanding. Looking back at the video, I don't know why it was louder at the first part. Um, I do think I had five or so um, supersonic rounds and then five or so or however many subsonic. That could definitely be part of it. Um, but actually, both suppressors I had out there that day did that. First, they did not fire normally, and then they were super quiet. Anyway, let's look at flash performance. So as you can see, flash performance was pretty impressive. Literally no flash seen on the camera, and we were shooting other cans that night, so I do know that the camera was picking up flash. None from that. Now, part of my explanation could be there was some residue left from shooting it wet, but it pretty well been shot out from being wet. So I would just say that um, it's, it's an impressive can when it comes to flash reduction. Next, caveats and variables. So we're going to move into a couple negatives. I actually found... Uh, handful of negatives about this can, at least from my point of view and what I do and how I do it. Um, but the first few I'm going to give allowances because I want to be fair to this can, right? I don't want to just talk trash. There's some really great things, like it's an ability to wind off the pistol at least all the way. So first thing is uh, sound attenuation minus when it was wet. Um, not impressive whatsoever. Uh, I would say here and safe. I didn't have it. I, not at the p point in my channel where I have uh, instruments to tell me, but just my own hearing. I have very sensitive ears, very good hearing, and no pain whatsoever. So definitely hearing safe, but definitely loud as far as a pistol can will go. Um, I mean, people say, well, they're not going to be Hollywood quiet. Some cans are, and this can's definitely not by any stretch of the imagination. So. What I do want to say though is this is a 40 caliber bore, not 9mm. And I really only, not only shot it on 9mm. So to be fair, 
I have noticed in some of my other suppressor use that a bore diameter actually does have a fair amount to do with sound attenuation. So I don't want to say the Osprey 9 is bad just because the Osprey 40 lacked impressing me whatsoever. It's very underwhelmed. And a lot of that is, this is a can I have more experience with, the GM45, 45 caliber can. Um, it is very loud for with 9mm. I haven't gotten to shoot the 45 yet. Shooting on 10mm, it is loud, but at the same time, for a 10mm, it's pretty quiet. 9mm, um, not so much. So I was expecting, after all I heard about the Osprey, especially the Osprey in 45, so me thinking the 40 would be more so, um, all I heard about was how quiet it was and impressive it was, and I was very underwhelmed. So I don't put that on Silencer Co. I put that out on, I think, people giving positive reviews because they didn't want to give a negative review. So, with that out of the way, let's go on to uh, the use. I did not use it with a pistol, ca pistol caliber carbine or 300 blackout. And um, I just don't have the resources right now to test those applications. Um, at this point, I think that those are more, a more ideal use for this can. However, I will put out an updated video later probably following up, focusing on those weapon platforms. Um, especially looking at pictures, the Osprey looks very at home with the MPX, MCX, um, and other PCCs, so that might make more sense. And I think the can could have different meaning to me when I try it on those platforms. Um, that being said though, I'd probably have to compare it to a rifle caliber can for 300 blackout. I'd be very surprised if it performed better than my uh, Gemtech 1. I'd be very surprised. But it might. So, uh, now, I've seen people who have um, used this can on 10 millimeter, and it didn't seem to go well. Now, I don't know out of how many people are using it for 10 mil, how many times it's gone wrong, but the fact that a big reason why I was interested in this can is because it says 10 mil on the site. Not that Silencer Co. won't fix it, but that's a lot of time for your investment to be away from you not being used, especially if you've only bought one. So, to me, it doesn't say 10 millimeter on the site, therefore I recommend, and I don't know about Silencer Co., but I recommend you probably don't use this on 10 millimeter. So, especially because 10 millimeter rounds can be way hotter than 300 blackout supersonic rounds. So, something else to consider. They don't want you putting 300 blackout supersonic through it. You probably shouldn't be putting average to above average 10 millimeter rounds through it. Now, maybe you're... 10 millimeter rounds that are basically 40 Smith & Wesson? Yeah, probably fine. But anyway, I digress. So having to re-time the can, now I do admit right off the bat, this is why this is an allowance, this is a first world problem, right? Dude, you have a suppressor, why are you complaining? Um, I, this just goes, this is, this is a cherry on the cake of reasons why I wouldn't buy one of these and don't really recommend one. Um, it is yet another thing, if you find yourself switching this between guns, um, you know, this is, I've been using this as a 9mm dedicated can. I have a couple 9mm's, friends do, where you want to swap it around, it's just one other thing to do. Is it the end of the world? No. But, you know, it's an irritation, um, or just something that's annoying to have to do. So, they make other cans that aren't eccentric, I probably would recommend one of those. Um, if you can join that with these other reasons. So, getting into legitimate complaints, um, again, not totally on Silencer Co., but let me illustrate one of the big issues here is uh, you have a Glock 17, you have a Surefire X300, both very ubiquitous items as far as the gun industry is concerned, and you have an Osprey, which in and of itself is fairly ubiquitous, yet you can't use all three at the same time. That's kind of a big issue for me because Glock 17 is my primary pistol in two forms. Both of which forms are going to be an issue for the Osprey if I'm running an X300. Now it does help that my concealed carry gun has an XC1 on it. So yay for me having that on there. Of course it'll hang down in front of that. But overall can't just throw it on my 17. Compounding that problem is this really only works with one pistol suppressor holster or suppressed pistol holster. 
Uh, again, kind of a first world problem, but at the same time, now that we're getting some decent holsters on the market for holstering a pistol while it's suppressed, the fact that none of them are going to work with an Osprey except for one, kind of an issue. Um, so basically, in order for this to ride on a pistol and holster that pistol all at the same time, I'm going to have to use my XC1 uh, Glock 17 with a uh, um, cry precision holster, which is fine. It's a good holster, but if I'm wanting to run something a little more slick, especially for shooting competition or something, if you're in a competition where you can use a suppressed pistol, um, you're not using a Ragnarok, Ragnarok SD, that's for sure. And uh, while this runs pretty good on my 17L, while it has a X300 on it, I really like running my 17L in uh, in my uh, Armadillo uh, X4 V2, but that's obviously not going to happen with the Osprey as well. So there are some issues as far as um, versatility, usability, etc. Now with uh, the can unscrewing, right, eccentric design, it does try to unscrew, which kind of surprised me at all, but it wasn't going to go all the way, that's great, but at the same time, you can get O-rings to go in your, on your thread of barrels, in your suppressor boosters, etc., which are going to prevent that as well. So, again, kind of negating. Now, let's get to the last part, where supposedly a big selling feature is that they don't, this doesn't obscure your sights. Well, I have news for you. Um, for one, I shoot both eyes open, so that really doesn't happen anyway. Two, with this optic now on my pistol, I'm pretty much going to see over just about any suppressor. So again, kind of a non-event for me as far as features. So, uh, let's kind of cover the last two points. Uh, so my thoughts... Not that great. Um, I'm not saying silencer goes bad, and I'm not saying, saying that this suppressor doesn't have a use, especially for an average shooter that isn't doing some of the stuff I'm doing. Very well may be useful. Um, but for me, uh, until I try it on a pistol caliber carbine or 300 blackout rifle like a SIG MCX, I just don't. I just don't see for me much use for it. And the main thing is not being able to use it with a gun with an X300 or um, the suppressed pistol holsters. Now I will say that Glocks have an extremely low bore axis. By bore axis, that's the center of the barrel um, and then down to the frame, basically. So some guns are going to be taller. And so it holds the Osprey up higher. I've seen pictures of, um, I want to say definitely P30s, maybe VP9s, which are HK Striker fired guns, and those sit up high enough to where the Osprey doesn't hang down and hit the light. So there's where it's going to be a different factor for somebody else other than me. Part of the reason I have an X300 and a Glock 17 is for doing this channel. Um, a lot of stuff is easy to find, holsters, etc., for those items. So. Where I'm trying to make it easy on myself to acquire gear, to test, train, compare, etc. Um, Glock 17 X300 is the way to go. So it seems like the Osprey for me is not the way to go. So this final bit of information, which is important because it's a, a really big positive for the Osprey, um, for people that may be dealing with some issues out there with their guns running suppressed, is that um, I had a Glock 17 Gen 5. I ran the GM45 on it, and it would not run. It pretty much choked on almost every round. Uh, then it got to the point where it would kind of work on 147 grain, tried a different barrel, and then it wasn't even that consistent with the 147 grain. Uh, the first barrel, by the way, was a Lone Wolf. It's consistent with 140, choked on everything else. The Glock OEM, half by 28 barrel, right? I didn't even know they existed either. Uh, got one of those, and it was even it was even inconsistent with 147 grain, but still at least fired that occasionally. Now I did a lot of research to figure out what was a problem. I ended up greasing the shit out of this booster assembly, and I put more rounds, especially 124 grain versus 115, through my Glock. Now also in that process, I sold my Glock Gen 5 and got a Gen 5 MOS. So once again restarted. So the whole point being that 
you want your striker fire pistol to be broken and especially your Glock. Apparently that's a thing, but if you have a um, pretty well broken in Glock, you're probably not going to have that problem. I say all that to say that when I threw the Osprey on there, it ran flawlessly with every bullet I put through. It didn't matter if it was 115 grand, 147, 124, didn't matter. This Glock 17 ran with that Osprey, no problem. And then I threw the Osprey on my wife's HKP30, ran flawlessly on that. And then I ran it on my, of course, my 17L, and it was flawless on that. So, as far as a plug and play can, did awesome. So where I have a sample size of basically two similar cans, they're both monocore, monolithic core, and they're uh, both lightweight, where I thought weight might be an issue with the GM45, turns out something else with the uh, dynamics, probably the turbulence, etc. But the Osprey ran great on all the guns, so that was very refreshing. Then again, imagine my disappointment when <laughs> I couldn't use it in those holsters or with the damn light. So. That was a real hang-up for me, the close. Well, I think the Osprey and Osprey 40 primarily uh, is a decent or average performing can. I do believe, especially considering today's market versus when the Osprey came out, there are better options on, on uh, the market. Now, uh, as far as my use, I almost have no use for it. I'll probably just use it on my 17L exclusively. Um, maybe on my YSP30, but I almost never shoot it, so. Uh, the other caveat would be a pistol caliber carbine or a 300 blackout style weapon. Then it might make sense to me, but as it is now, as a general pistol can, I just don't see much use for it. Even if somebody doesn't have some of the hang-ups that I do, uh, which are subjective, I still think you can get a better can. Um, you can find cans that shoot just as well wet and flash suppress just as well. And those are the two best things it did. Then the other selling features, as I mentioned, are kind of non-events, especially for somebody like me. Shooting with both eyes open, O-ring on your can to keep it from coming off, stuff like that. It just, I think this can has been outpaced. It was brilliant for when it came out, but there is better out there. So, um... Sorry, Silencer Co. Just didn't dig it. I still think you're a good company. I know your customer service is outstanding, and I am confident that uh, some of your other products are great, which I will be reviewing. So, um, this has been James Donaldson with the Contemporary Gentleman, and until next time, keep your composure.